Look what you done to me. I can't, I can't sleep. I'm not the same as before. No, no, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of me wants all of you. You're doomed. I got to know oh, body and soul. You got no doubt. Inside and out, we are oh, body and soul. Don't leave me out in the cold. Just love me, body and soul. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, I got it. I want to share this email with you guys, and I want to know what y'all feel about it. I want y'all to leave y'all comment, please, on this, because I really need to know how many of y'all grew up like this, and a lot of people are ashamed. They don't mind talking about, you know, damaging things that they uh, experienced with their fathers, and a lot of them are honest, and they talk about the damage that they experienced just in their dysfunctional households in general, but... It's kind of hard to talk about things that happen when it's your other parent, being your mom. So I got this letter today, and I want to send some of y'all who are working on um, self-recovery over to Lisa Morano's page. Um, I think she does good work in terms of self-healing and self-propelling yourself forward. Uh, there was a letter I want to share with you. And it's, it's like, okay, mom, my angry mom attacked me on social media. Okay, we got a lot of that going on. So, the letter starts off, have you ever been accused of something that you're not guilty of? Have you ever had someone project their assumptions, perceptions, and opinions onto you? And then found yourself defending yourself only to end up feeling dirty like you really did do something wrong when you know you didn't. A lot of us grew up like that. Uh, I grew up this way with a mom who made up all sorts of stories in her head about what kind of child. What? I'm sorry, about what kind of child I was to justify her feelings towards me, which were filtered through her mother wounds, the ones that left her feeling resentful towards the innocent needs of her children, the ones that she didn't even know that she had. Don't know manual come with this job. So you have to look at these this. Your mama's situation um, with, she probably was a better model than her mama, <laughs> okay? Nevertheless, the more we know, the more we grow. My mom was accusatory, judgmental, critical, passive-aggressive, cynical, angry, condescending, cold, emotionally unavailable, and believed every fantasy in her mind conjured up about me which meant she really never saw me at all i lived in fear of upsetting my mother and i knew that needing her would set her off so i learned to isolate and become super responsible as a way to weirdly please her growing up i felt like i lived under a microscope and as if it were my job to convince her that I was not evil. Calculate this evil calculating person that she thought I was. And then one day during my separation. And after she made a snarky comment about 
me for all to hear. I just gave up altogether trying to please her. I just gave up. This week, an angry mom took to one of my social media pages to throw shade my way and accuse me of turning uh, adult children against their parents. Hmm. No, that's not what I do. However, I could imagine being a mom whose daughter no longer wanted to speak to her. Hmm. I want y'all to hear this now, cause, and I want y'all to kind of understand what we go through in families, and it's just normal. And it's got to go through these growing pains in order for you to be free. Um, It's kind of like, and it, you know, it, it's what you experience with um, uh, Romeo. Okay? So it's very... up. Uh, uh, it's, it's very important that we understand this dynamic and not just get up there and talk about, you know, without any solutions. OK, it, it that is counterproductive. Anyway, I, she said I could imagine being a mom whose daughter no longer wanted to speak to her and how deeply that might have hurt. I could emphasize empathize with her pain even though I knew her anger was misplaced after a few back and forth comments between she and I and regardless of how many times I reinforced the idea that I empathize with her I did my best to explain that I am not in the business of turning any child against their parent and I told her I had hope that she and her daughter could find their way back to one another in the future I explained how I was able to, to reach a point of spiritual objectivity and was fortunate enough to understand that my mother and my father from a higher state of consciousness. And now that has allowed me to release the pain from the past. Mm, mm, mm. I explained how most adult children are so emotionally abused. They've been programmed right out of recognizing that they were even abused at all. And that my aim is to help wounded adult children access the emotions and the experiences of childhood that prevent them from experiencing the breakthroughs that they need to live an authentic life. Because all children are in a hypnotic brainwave state up until the age of seven. And as adults, don't even know that they are living out of their negative childhood programming. But she couldn't hear me. She, and then she made a few comments that had me understanding the dynamic between her and her daughter more clearly. One of those comments were, my daughter doesn't even know what bad is. And so if she wants to hate me because I live with a, with an, with, <laughs> well, I live with an ass, then so be it. It reminded me of how my mom and dad would marginalize me and my siblings and fail to empathize with what we were go going through and experiencing. It was always about them, what they felt, what they were going through, what they thought, what they believed, and what their opinions were. We had to understand them, but they didn't have to understand us. Which is super weird when you consider I was only seven. The first time I heard my dad justify my mother's cruelty towards me by telling me how rough her childhood was. What the hell is that? We were basically invisible to my parents. Despite the iron school uniforms, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and our plastic Snoopy lunch boxes. 
And as children, we were forced to deny our inner reality for the sake of white picket fences and neatly trimmed hedges. I get it. When a parent's world is stressful, frust frustrating, and especially when they are in abusive relationships and carry unhealed wounds of their past, sometimes all a parent can do is make sure that their kids are fed, bathed, and get to sleep on time. And while that's valid, it is also important that we as children of such adults Recognize how our parents' stressful lives have impacted us. Not so we can blast them on Facebook or ridicule them with guilt. Instead, we, we learn to appreciate how our brains interpreted the lack of connection to our parents. We look within and over our shoulders and into our pasts. To help us make sense of our self-sabotaging behaviors, negative self-perceptions, and lack of boundaries, and low self-worth. And by the way, I was that mom. And I didn't always have the bandwidth to meet my children's emotional needs. But I also take accountability for the pain I have caused them. And I have committed my life to helping parents and children heal their lifetime childhood programming. I didn't flinch. In the past, an angry mom accusing me of things that I am not guilty of might have triggered me. However, this time around, I didn't even flinch. And that's because I know who I am and I know others can only see me through their perceptual lenses. The one key idea has changed my life and allowed me to not react to other people's criticism, projections, and opinions. Today, try to think back to the times in your life when someone you love vomited their faulty perceptions or projections on you. And then, and then think about how did that make you feel? Did you defend yourself? Did you fawn after them and try to convince them that their perceptions about you was wrong? Did you isolate, hide, and try to make yourself small? Did you apologize for their perception of you? Hmm. I can say yes to all of those. If so, please know how other people see you is always projected through their inner lens. And that's not something that you can control. I mean, you just can't. May you have a wonderful day. Loving you and your divine inner child. All my love, your sister on the path to emotional freedom and self-mastery. One breakthrough at a time. Lisa. Lisa, again, Morano is a breakthrough life coach. And I, I, I would suggest that y'all go to her, her, her page. I call her my sister from another mother. And that's because, um, like I said, I have to get away from the culture of dysfunction in order for me to be whole. And as African Americans, not only do we have a cultural bondage that we live through, we also have a strong, strong group think. That it's hard to break out of unless you hear it through another prism. So, I want to know what y'all think about this. Have y'all experienced that? Have you ever had somebody accuse you of something that you know you wasn't guilty of? However, 
they embarrassed you out loud? And what if that person happened to be your mother? How do you handle this kind of betrayal? Well, that's where it all starts in order to get healthy. Starts with our families of origin. Because if we can't face them and the damage that was perpetuated upon us, then we can't fix it. And we've, we'll perpetually be a hamster on a hamster wheel. Running, running, running. But never get no freaking place fast. Let me know what you think about it. Okay? Thank you, Dr. Uh, well, not Dr. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. Thank you for your kind, uplifting, and real, real healing story. I want to know what y'all think. Leave y'all comments below. Like what you hear. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Please share the channel, y'all. Let's get these likes up. Come on, get these likes up and put some comments above, uh, along with um, you hearing this story. Because I know a lot of y'all have experienced this, especially living with narcissist parents or any kind of cluster B oppressive family dynamic. Leave your comment below and I'll see you in the next video.